All right, next here, we have something really new here in Tasha's Cauldron where they really get into the group patrons, talking about powerful organizations or individuals that could definitely influence the game and how it started. How's the party formed? What is their common purpose? Making a launching off spot for some quest, whatever that may be. They've got some good ideas right here and actually have dedicated a pretty good piece of the book. So a lot of people probably aren't familiar with these group patrons. So let's just see what it's about. Then we're going to look at some good examples of these. So up here at the top, we see each adventuring group is bound together by the quest it embarks on and by the dangers its members face together. This chapter offers another way to bind your party together. So there you go. Instead of just meeting in a pub or whatever somewhere in a tavern, Here's another place that all these people could already know each other and have a common purpose. So here's that binding, a group patron. These patrons provide a strong binding element, an individual or organization that unites a party as a team in service to a greater purpose. A group patron can help set the tone of your party's entire campaign. For example, a group whose patron is an academic institution is likely to have a very different story from a group that serves a military. A patron can influence characters' relationships, their backstories, and the types of danger they face. So when you really like to put a strong character background to whatever it is or whoever it is you're playing, this is a good way right here. During character creation, every player has the opportunity to weave connections between their character and the other members of the party rather than or in addition to creating a web of established relationships players can work with the dm to choose a group patron and if you're interested in being your own patron they got a little section on that towards the end so how do these patrons work what's this going to be all about the following sections prevent present several group patron options. The description of each patron provides an overview of the types of organizations the group patron represents. Perks, there's a good thing to know right there, what are the perks of membership? And Quest, the patron encourages adventures to undertake. Think about something like a thieves guild or a military group giving some type of quest. With the input of your DM, you can customize these patrons to reflect a specific establishment in your campaign world. Well, that's what Dungeons & Dragons is all about, customizing it to what you like. Or to serve as a launch pad tailored for organizations of your design. For example, the Guild Group Patron could represent the Harpers. There's a famous group right there from the Forgotten Realms a lot of people have probably heard of. The Clifftop Adventures Guild in Eberron or a Homebrew League, so on down the line. Or perhaps a criminal syndicate, there's an interesting option there, a military force, or other category of patron that better fits your party's goals. Choose and customize the group patron that works best for your party and the types of adventures you want to explore. So down here towards the bottom, they mention group assistance. So what's this group going to do for you right here? Having a group patron gives an adventuring group a common purpose, which inspires better coordination in the form of guidance and encouragement. As a result of this unity, each member of the party can grant advantage, how about that, to an ability check, attack roll, or a saving throw of another member of the party. So there's a little good plus to have. To grant advantage in this way, a character and the chosen target must be able to see or hear. Now, how about that? You don't see the hear option too often. Usually, it's like see within 60 feet or something like that. And neither can be incapacitated. Once a party member grants this advantage, that individual can't do so again until they finish a long rest. So, it's always a little something extra. Looking at perks right here. A group patron offers your party a number of perks for your service. These range from standard business arrangements, such as a steady wage, always good to have gold coming in, and access to staff facilities, to extraordinary boons, such as audiences with powerful figures, or exceptions from certain laws. So maybe you need to get in to see the leader of some powerful group, a king, or anything like that. Maybe you need access around some laws, maybe to get into an area where ordinarily you can't do that. Specific perks are presented in the description of each group patron. So we're going to see all the different ones. 
The DM should not feel limited to providing only the perks noted in each group patron's description. Patrons give a party access to solutions and support they wouldn't have otherwise, and a patron can use their varied resources to guide their agents or prepare them for greater adventures. So sounds like a good point to put in some NPCs right there. So look at the different assignments here. Your group's patron occasionally offers you an assignment, a mission that provides a springboard for adventure. So there's the tipping off point for the DM right there. Of course, it's up to you how you respond. In other words, you want to say no, say no. You're not slaves to these people here. To your patrons' demands, and interesting stories can result if you decide to refuse an assignment. A more hands-off patron can still significantly motivate your group. Maybe you seek adventures based on what pleases your patron, possibly earning status and rewards within your organization. An academy, for example, might not organize particular missions, so you hunt down ancient artifacts, knowing that your patron will reward you for bringing them back. You have the freedom to chart your own destiny, while letting the patron shape the nature of your group and the adventures you undertake. So they give some good examples of patrons, and these are some of the first things you'd think of, plus a few others. Here are some of the most likely patrons for an adventuring group, presented in alphabetical order. An academy, they kind of mentioned that before. An ancient being, how about something like uh, an ancient dragon or some type of uh, celestial, who knows what it could be. An aristocrat, right, got the rich and powerful. Criminal syndicate, good idea right there. A guild, right, thieves guild, assassins guild, fighters guild, whoever. Some military force, religious order, There's a, you could think of a hundred of those right there, or a sovereign. So that's how these patrons are going to work. Think about uniting the party right there, giving them common goals. How did they meet? Giving them common purpose, even getting this ability check and so on down here. They mention perks and tell you, well, don't limit to just what's right here. Use your imagination. All from an assignment. They want it, they can take it. So we'll continue by looking at these different patrons. There's quite a bit of information on each one of them. We'll see that next. Till next time, good luck and good gaming.